Hey there, this is Red. It's time for another Red Reveals, essentially an unboxing. So I've just gone over um, my other part of my Thunderstone Kickstarter that arrived, which was Quest Expansion number eight, and this is Quest Expansion number nine. So purpose of this episode is to cover what's in nine. I do want to go back to one thing on eight. So when I got eight, I had the, the nice box here and I said I would never use it. Well, I lied. I put my stuff in there just because I wanted to see how well it worked. So take a look at eight here. Take a rule book off. See how well all of that fits in there. I mean, it's that's that's pretty slick. So I'm, I'm really happy with the insert for these and how everything just slides right in there. Pretty nice. All right. So that's a good job there. All right, so let's get back on to talking about nine. So what is nine? Nine's Clockwork Destiny. Um, I've got my cards out here, my guardian, my rooms, my rule book. Uh, rule book's got the standard stuff. It talks about allies and the prestige classes and you know some of the pieces that come in here. Um, so if we take a look at the box here, let's see, get that nice underneath there. So we've got Clockwork Destiny and Let's see, there's a text blurb on the back. Let's read what the text blurb says. So it says, an old ally emerges from the Stormlands to discover the fate of his ancestors and the future they forged for the world. But as he learns to unlock the secret powers hidden within the very fabric of the world, another seeks to use the same power to recreate the world in a horrifying new image. Take on the role of one of the champions of New Keltar and learn to use the powers of Thunderstones to put a stop to these nefarious plans. So uh, let's see here. Clockwork Destiny is an all new quest for Thunderstone Quest. Discover all new side quests to construct powerful weapons and use Thunderstone cards to empower those new heroes, weapons, and items. So I believe this is a little bit more mechanical and uh, involves a lot of Thunderstone-y stuff. So using Thunderstones to power things. All right. So we got our box, got a card. I think the first thing we'll hit on is our prestige classes here. So prestige classes we're looking at, one of them is the Thunderstone Savant. So this prestige class is gonna be all around doing things Thunderstone-y. So um, there's, when you have cards with Thunderstone in them, you get attack, defeat monsters with Thunderstone in their title, use a card that has Thunderstone in its title. So everything there is about you see a huge emphasis on doing Thunderstone stuff. So there's your, your Thunderstone Savant Prestige class, right? And you get some neat legendary cards that are some cool armor and add-ons. All right. The other side you have here is Living Legends. So this Prestige class looks like it's aimed at uh, leveling your heroes up, kind of gaining fame and being cool, getting the big heroes, uh, ending the game with big heroes, and then having them stick around. So this is all about uh, empowering your heroes. Like the last set seemed to be a lot about doing things in the village. This has got stuff with doing things with Thunderstones and doing things with like powering up your, your characters and your heroes. All right, so let's take a look at the Guardian. So the guardian you've got here is Thalvra, and you've got Thalvra's lair. So he's got smelting, forging, and disarmed are the different effects that he can throw out there. Um, and then when he converts over, he's going to be a big bad. He's worth 13, which is pretty massive. 10 plus 3. Uh, let's see here. Smelting. He gives you starter daggers, which is kind of annoying. Um, kind of bulk up your deck there. So he's kind of cool. All right. Enough of him. Let's take a look at rooms, because I think rooms are one of the most interesting things that comes with all of these sets. So let's start off here with our level one room. So we have a Magic Mines. Um, it's not going to take any light to get in there. And we have monsters here have plus one and plus one for each guardian key that has been found. Interesting. So they're going to get more powerful over time. That's cool. I like that. All right. Room number two is the sacred site, which is going to give you a potion. Looks like uh, you're getting an additional 
health and an additional magic defense there. When you move out of this room, unless you have a rogue, destroy one gear token. So you could earn your, uh, your potion, but you could end up destroying it as you get out of there. And it's going to make it tough to flow right through there, right? Because you're going to end up dropping some of your gear going through there. All right, then we have Kelturian Laboratory. So let's see here. We've got a too light to get in there. We've got a after you move into this room, unless you have a rogues or spell, discard one hero. So there's some more emphasis on being roguish. And then buy one ally item or spell for two cheaper as a spoils. That's a nice spoils effect. It's going to take two light to get in there, which is, you know, that's kind of kicking it up the notch there on what it takes to get in. But uh, so far we've seen two, two rooms that favor rogues. All right. Our other level two room is the town square. So no light to get in there. Plus one on the damage, and you're going to get a light token, so or lantern. I mean, that's it's actually a fairly easy room. That's what I would consider one of the softer level two rooms out there. So it'll be an easy one to get through. Uh, let's see what we've got for level three. So that one's got a three light requirement, which is pretty decent uh, as far as what it takes to get in there. Uh, and we have refill this room face down, turn this room's monster face up before a battle here. If it's not defeated, put it back at the bottom of its deck. So this is a fighting the unknown as you go in there. And we have level up as spoils. You get to level up one hero, paying three less on the shard cost. Place your champion in the zero room. So it's going to let you level somebody up and kick you out. And again, that's the, the fighting unknown one. You don't get to see what monster you get to fight against. And that's pretty rough at a level three. All right, so other level three, we've got the Dark Forge. So Dark Forge has weapons have plus two skill, give plus one value to the total of dice rolled from monsters. Ooh, so that's going to enhance monsters that do randomness stuff. And then again, after battle, you're going to go to the zero room. So you do get a treasure. Monsters have plus two on magic defense. What else we got there? Two light is not too bad for a level three room. That's not a huge penalty to get in there. So I think the weapons having plus two skill is that's that's pretty rough. The plus one to the die on the monsters maybe not so much of a big deal, but if you're in a uh, equipment heavy deck and everything's going to be tougher to equip, I can see where this could be a problematic room. So. Another interesting one. There's a couple of easy ones in here. It looks like we're favoring rogues a little bit. Um, I'd say that's a nice set of rooms. We'd play with most of those. So let's get to the fun part. Let's open some cards. So we have, uh, let's see our first pack here. Let's see what's in there. We'll rip her open. Put my stuff off to the side. All right, so we have Clockwork Destiny 1. And we're going to take a look at some monsters here first. So what do we want to start off with? So what do I grab? Let's see if I can go through and grab all of the, what do we got? Material spirits, undead material spirits. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to try to grab them by four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I'm going to try to grab them by their group and we'll go through them that way. All right, so right here we have our first of our undead material spirits. So you've got the gunpowder ghost. Um, let's see here. He's got five toughness, plus one. So he's going to get, uh, what are you going to get? Plus one for each guardian key found. Before battle for each guardian key found, discard a card. Ooh, okay. So he's going to be nice to fight, but he's going to be tough to fight as the game goes on. That's an interesting twist. And there's one, two of those, three of those in there all right next up we've got a spark spirit uh let's see here four that's not all that bad he's gonna do a damage to you. he's worth three so he's okay how many of those are two of those three of those three spark spirits all right then we have steam shades which are five with the one magic defense when you move out of this room destroy one gear or a shard uh, he's going to give you 
a lantern and he's worth three so he's not too tough to fight but he's you're not going to want to just breeze through his room he's probably going to be a a stop and take him out type character and there's three of those in there Ooh, and it looks like there's a the clockwork lich look at him he's pretty nasty i love the artwork uh players may as a dungeon discard one card with thunderstone in its title to give the clockwork lich minus two or shuffle it into the monster deck refilling face up and he's gonna give you a treasure so yeah he's got some he's got some toughness there he's gonna be really tough at level one but it looks like you can make him go away which is awfully nice and fight one of those other monsters so I like that mechanic. That's kind of interesting to have a bigger monster at level one, but the ability to push him to the bottom. So pretty cool. So those are our, what are those? Those are the material spirit set. All right. So let's set those aside. Got some material spirits. And then the next ones are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. All right. So the next ones are, looks like kobold. So we have mystical kobold so a firefighter and he's got a little uh notice there that says when you move out of this room discard one weapon one card with or one card with thunderstone in the title so you're kicking cards out and there's two of those and then we have <laughs> he's kind of see-through so you can kind of see through the rest of the stuff as color matches my green screen let's see if you can see it over here better yeah see he's a nice green there we go. So water priest, and he looks kind of watery because you can see through him. Um, when you move out of this room, discard one random card or one card with Thunderstone in its title. So it looks like we're messing with Thunderstone cards with these uh, these kobolds here. Uh, when you move out of this room, discard one card with Thunderstone in its title or destroy two gear tokens. Yep, we're messing with the Thunderstone cards. Ooh, that guy looks mean. So the Earthen Guard. So he's just big and tough. So five to take him out with two on the defense. Plus he's going to do two damage to you. So he's a baddie. There's three of those in there. All right. So it looks like in the, we've got the one big one in there. So we've got the Glow Rock Priest. When you move out of this room, discard one card with Thunderstone in its title or take a damage. All right. So you won't be flowing through his room. Um, and he's worth a treasure and he's going to give you a wound. So he doesn't look all that tough to defeat, but you're just not going to want to breeze through his room because he's got that, uh, that issue to throw out there, a little piece to trip you up. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next set of cards, what do we have? We have, there's going to be another set of our first set of level twos. So the CCOV gang. So it looks like a golem. So what do we have here? Zipper, which is a humanoid golem. Um, after you move into this room, destroy a gear token. Before and after battle, destroy a gear token. So it's got that hazard of when you move through the room, you're losing gear tokens. So uh, yeah, he's going he's gonna to remove them all. So it's not going to be a big deal if you don't have any gear tokens. But... Uh, if you got them, he's making them go away. It looks kind of like a, maybe like a quickling from D&D. &D. All right. Uh, Mama Brock. So after you move out of this room, take a damage. Before and after battle, take a damage. All right. So I see a reoccurring theme here. All right. Okay. So he's going to break the theme. We saw a theme with the first two cards, but this guy busted out a little bit. So we've got sticks, 1.28 and he's six two two, and he's worth a treasure. So he's not horribly bad to fight. I think that one's an all right of the ones I've seen so far. He's probably one of the easier ones in there. Um, Brightonicus Rex. After bat, ooh, destroy one non-starter card. Ooh, that's gonna, that's gonna mean, wait, but you get a bread out of the whole thing. So yeah, not worth it, but <laughs> that's kind of a, that's kind of a rough after effect there. And there's two of them in there. All right, and we've got Takai, which is after you move into this room, discard a card. Ooh, all right. Who else does he get? He's going to give you a light. He's worth five. He's going to give you two wounds if you fight him. So that's kind of tough. He's not really 
I mean, he's going to wound you a decent amount, but he's not really all that tough. He's got six health. I think it's really, it's the, you're not going to be able to flow through his room. So that seems like kind of a reoccurring thing with this set is uh, a lot of things that make you not just jump through the rooms anywhere you want to. They're going to trip you up along the way. All right, the next set of level twos are wire eaters. So we've got a wire eater that's a swarm. So this is a nice D6. Make things tougher, right? Um, so before battle, destroy a card with Thunderstone on it in its title or destroy a card with uh, light or give this monster plus three and add plus one wound. Ooh, okay. Not good. Plus you're rolling a D6. And there's two of those in there. All right, then this one's going to get the D6 roll and... Oh, if you roll one or two, you get a roll again. Ah. Okay, so he's got some variable abilities that happen. Two of those. This one is just the base, gets the D6, but he starts as a three. I think I would rather fight that than the ones that like destroy my stuff. So there's one that starts with a three. Um, after you move out of this room, resolve this after battle. After battle, destroy one card with Thunderstone in its title or take a wound. Mm, okay. Another let's mess you up as you move through the rooms. And there's a there's just a bigger wire eater that takes four rather than three, and he gets the D6. So there we go. Wire eaters. Alright, so we're through our twos. Now we're heading into our threes. And ooh, these look one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's see what we got here. So our first of our level threes are Mech Menaces. Giant Golem Dragon. Wow, he looks pretty cool, liking that one. Um, the Mecha Dragon. See, and saying you fought a Mecha Dragon is just awesome. So let's see here, minus one if you have a rogue and minus one for each guardian key that has been found. So again, we're seeing some emphasis on the rogues. And this one is, yeah, so there's other things that get tougher with keys. This one's gonna get a little bit easier with keys. All right, so how many of those do we have? We have two Mecha Dragons. Then we have a Mecha Troll, because, you know, trolls aren't bad enough. We need to make a Mecha Troll. Um, giant Golem Humanoid. Immune to physical and magic, unless you have five plus light or three Guardian Keys have been found. All right, so the more Guardian Keys are going to make him actually defeatable or you have tons and tons of light. So he looks pretty mean. He's going to give you three wounds. He's worth the treasure, though, and seven experience, so it might be worth it. But, uh, yeah, he looks pretty he, pretty tough. But I, I would imagine if you're going to make a giant golem mech troll, he, he should be pretty tough. All right, so a mech of rock. So what do we got here? Minus one armor for each guardian key that has be, been found, and for each bow that you have. Oh, well, wielded bow. So you have to actually have the bow equipped in order to get that bonus. So he's got a before battle, destroy a hero with four or less. Okay. So that's, that's something you can get around, I think, as you get late into the game and you're fighting against threes. Might be a good way to get uh, your low level or lower level heroes out if you're looking to do that also. So 8-4, that's 12. That's not too bad. Two damage, good experience, and a treasure. That's one that's worth fighting, I think. He's not too rough. There's three of those in there. All right, Mecha Rhino. Oh, Charging Cyborg Rhino. Let's see here. After battle, take three. You may destroy wielded cards to reduce the wounds by the card's printed skill. All right. That's kind of cool because that's kind of a uh, we're going to shove things in front of the rhino and let him trample that so that he doesn't trample you. I like that mechanic. That's pretty neat. Um, and seven plus three. He's not horrible tough, um, but he's going to destroy your stuff. So I like him as a level three. How many of those are there? There's two, three. Do we have one more? Nope. That's it. All right. So that's all of our mech menaces so we have one more set of threes to go after and one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all right 
What do we have here? We have atom automatons. So Ashmal. Let's see. This swarm has plus two d six. Unless you have a card with Thunderstone in its title, then one d six. So there you want your Thunderstone cards. Um, if you have five light, gain one d six shards. Ooh, that's pretty neat. So the rain. Ugh, I would hate to take that on without a. A thunderstone thing because I would definitely want that. Um, so no, okay, whoa, whoa, sorry, I have to take that back. So the swarm has two d six base, and unless you have a card with thunderstone in the title, he's going to get a defense of one d six. So wow, that's that's going to be interesting. That's a whole lot of randomness. Plus, there's that that level three room there that gives a bonus of plus one. So uh, in the right room, he could be kind of annoying. So it could either be really easy, because that could be a two, and then you have a Thunderstone card. So he would be super easy to beat. But that could also be a 13 with six defense. Ugh. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty variable there. All right, and we've got two of those in there. First thought. So let's see here. He's going to have the same thing. Maybe that's the reoccurring thing there. 2d6 and 1d6, right? And then we have heroes. If your heroes have 10 skill, gain a bunch of shards. All right. Uh, Jurlwar. And he's got the similar thing with the dice. And then his spoils is if you have 5 plus magic, gain 1d6 shards. And we have... Palamides, which I believe was a uh, Dark Age of Camelot server that I played on. Um, he's just giving you three wounds. He doesn't have any other sort of special mess you up stuff. Uh, Tamashri. So let's see here. 2d6. His spoil is if you have no wounds, gain d6 shards. Yeah, not very likely as you're going after level three stuff. Could be. Maybe you just healed up, right? And he's going to give you three wounds. Yeah. All right. So that's it for all of the automatons. So let's see here. We had material spirits. And we had mystical kobolds. And then we have the CCOV gang. We had some gremlins. We had some mech menaces. And then finally, we had automatons. All right, so those are our, our evil monsters that we're fighting against in this set. All right, so next we're going to go into some of our heroes. So let's see here. The first one that we've got is Barquail, which is an avian beast, which kind of, I think there was some stuff that helped avians in the last set. So he's a, he's a cleric. Uh, heal one wound, you may give... One wielded bow plus one magic. Oh, that's kind of cool. He's got like this light bow looking thing. All right. Now let's see what happens when you go to level two. So at level two, you're going to bump up. You're going to get more strength or skill. So you're going to go from four to five. You have a two and then plus one if you've got a bow, plus one if you have a spell and dungeon heal a wound. Nice. And then when you bump all the way up to level three, you've got... You're going up to four attack, and you've got six skill and plus one for each spell and bow that you have. And in the village, you can do that heal. All right, so I'm liking that one. That's a nice hero. I give that hero my seal of approval. All right. Next hero is Shinaris. So elf, you're a queen, heal or sorry, Cleric Hero. Um, after the first time each turn you gain a card, including leveling, heal one wound. Like it, all right. And she attacks for two magic right out of the gate, which is decent. All right, as we pop her up to level two, what do we have there? So her attack is going up one. Did she have a gold value before? Nope, now she's got a gold value. And you can heal one wound, or you may buy one card from the marketplace and draw it. Ooh, that's nice. 
All right, and then as we hit all the way up to level three, we get yet another on our attack. Get a little bit more skill and village or dungeon, heal one wound. You may buy one card from the marketplace and draw it. Cool. I like her. I don't think I like her as much as the avian, but she's kind of fun. I do like those things where you can interact with, like when you're in the dungeon, you can interact with something from the marketplace. I, I like cards like that that let you do a little bit more than just in the place that you're at. All right. Next one up is Hamruler Oakenborn. All right. It's a dwarf fighter hero, and he looks pretty dwarfy, and he's got some sort of big spiky club, right? So we've got two attack, and he's got five skill. While wielding a blunt weapon, weapon, he has the rogue keyword. All right. So that's going to be really handy in this set because we saw a lot of things that dealt with the rogue keyword. All right, so what happens when you go up to level two? So he's getting a little bit more skilled and stronger. We attack for one more, then we get a bonus, plus one against golems and undead. And you're gonna get plus, so if you give him a blunt weapon, he's gonna again have plus one in the rogue keyword. All right, and he's built to fight some of this stuff in this set. So as we go up to three, we get yet two more attack and two more skills, so we're gonna be Handling some fairly big weapons at that point in time as we get up to eight. We've got plus two against golems and undead. Was it? Yeah, it was golems and undead before. While wielding a blunt weapon, he has the rogue and static keyword, but the weapon doesn't get static. Okay. He's pretty powerful. I'm liking him as a fighter. And he's giving you those rogue keywords which are going to be important in this game. All right, so in order to get in my next set of heroes, I need to open up my next set of cards. So let me work on that real fast as I slice that open. Let's see, favorite hero so far. I, um, I'm caught between the dwarf and the avian right now. Of three, I'm caught between two, right? So that's, <laughs> all right. Let's see here. I think if I were to make a call, I think I'd say it's the avian right now. All right. So our next one up is, what do we have? Tilka the Sculptor. So got Gnome Halfling Rogue. So she's got two gold right off the bat and two attack, but not a whole lot of strength. All right. Does she do something interesting when you take her up to level two? Level two, still two gold. Uh, gets a little bit more on the skill side. Village or dungeon. Gain one Thunderstone Protector from the box and draw it. Uh, we haven't seen Thunderstone Protectors yet. I imagine those will be pretty cool. Because uh, if that's what she's got, they got to be awesome. All right. Because let's see. At that point, she gets one more skill and her gold goes up by one, right? We go from two to three. And then we have get a Thunderstone Protector, and your Thunderstone Protectors get tougher. And she gives a light at that point in time. All right, so now I'm really interested in what the Thunderstone Protectors are going to look like. So either she's really lame because the Thunderstone Protectors are lame, or she's really cool because the Stunt Thunderstone Protectors are awesome. So uh, we'll have to hold out on that one because we don't know what the final word on the Thunderstone Protectors are. All right, so next up, who we have next? It looks like a, what is this one? This one's a, was that Kaslesh? A Euro Queen Rogue Hero. So tax for two, doesn't have a whole lot of skill, but she's got a light. Actually, I'm not sure if that's a he or a she. The, the armor's tough to tell, and the name, I would say, is a bit ambiguous. So, um... I'm not sure there. Uh, let's see here. I got one light, two attack, and three skill. So having the light right off the bat is nice. So what happens when we get to level two? Because that's not telling me a whole lot. So what happens when we hit level two? Okay, we get a gold because I don't think we had a gold before, did we? Nope. So we're starting to get some money, which is a win. Um, we've got a rogue keyword. Did we have that before? Well, we gained the wizard keyword. All right. Our skill goes up by one, our attack goes up by one, and we get a spoils ability. Put one bow or one spell on top of your deck. Ah, oh, so you can recharge them for later use. I like that. All right. And what happens at level three? 
Well, that's interesting. So you go from physical attack to magical attack. Uh, you still got a value of two. Oh, and you go from one to two. So you go up a little bit on the monies. Um, and you get plus one level while wielding a bow. Interesting. And there's some cards that synergize with that. Uh, spoils, if you have a spell and Castlac is wielding a bow, gain plus one hit point. So spell, they have to have a bow. That's a three card combo and you get one hit point. But you can put a bow or a spell on top of your deck. There is a spoils. So it might be not all that tough to set that up. Giving you two light. So, huh. I like the five magic attack. That's pretty interesting. And um, the five skill puts you in where you can wield a decent weapon at that point in time. So uh, I'm going to say a hero that could be interesting. Jury's out on that one. All right. Next up we have, what's this one? This is Liss. I think this is our final hero because we've got five out there. So we have this, who is a celestial human wizard hero. Celestial and human at the same time. All right. So we got two magic, and she's got two skill. Pretty basic. Not a whole lot going on there. Um, two's okay for your level one card. So then we bump up to level two. Holy cow, she gains all the text. All the text that was missing on this card has been moved to this card here. Because there's not much character, it's almost all text. So what do we have going on here? She goes from two to three on both attack and her skill. Um, you're going to get plus one level if you have a chaos spell. So it's going to make you a little bit more powerful. Some of the chaos spells groove on that. And we have dungeon. Shuffle one card into your deck. Discard two cards from your deck. Drawing one of them that is a chaos card or a card with thunderstone in its title. Take... A wound if you drew none mm, okay so if you get your deck built up with the right things she could be really cool otherwise her ability is fairly useless uh, well you could if you've got detrimental cards like you're getting um, diseases and stuff you could possibly if you had some detrimental cards you could push them out otherwise yeah that's interesting. I don't know about that one. All right, so let's see what happens to level three. Level three, discard three cards from your deck, drawing all of them that are chaos cards and have Thunderstone in their title. Take one if you drew none. So, okay, you stack heavily on chaos spells and you get some Thunderstone items and it could be pretty cool. So that's going to all depend upon there's... It's going to depend upon what ends up in your uh, in your village because either that's, she's going to be totally useless because you don't get any chaos spells, you don't have very many thunderstone stuff, or she's going to be a beast because she could potentially get three additional cards out, which uh, I don't know. That. She's going to probably be really good with this set of cards, but I think if you put her into the bigger mix, she's going to be a miss most of the time. So let's see if she's with this set of cards, because now we're getting into the items, right? So if she's with these set of cards, what is it that she gets to work with? So we have the Thunderstone Elixir, which is an item. Uh, what do we have there? We're paying four, and then we have a dungeon ability, which is gain one light or heal one wound. You may do both if you have two or more guardian keys, or... If the big guardian is out with a higher with a threat level three or higher okay uh, it's worth two so it's got decent value if you're going village so four for two and then the lighter heal i, I kind of like that plus it's giving you two uh two skill so i think that's an all right buy i might get that one all right next one up is uh, plate armor so it's going to give you plus three attack, and it's going to take five to put it on. It's worth one. So plus one for dwarves, plus one light for dwarves and orcs. Cancel the first effect each turn that discards or destroys the wielding hero. Oh, okay. So it's going to stop your hero from getting destroyed. 
going to give you a bunch of attack. It does give you minus one light, but if you're a dwarf or an orc, then it cancels that. So with your big broody, blunt wielding dwarf, this is probably an awesome set of armor to have on. So there's a there's a good synergy there, but um, I don't know if would I play that if I didn't have dwarves. Well, they cancel the first effect that discards or destroys the wielding hero is awfully nice too, and it's plus three attack. So yeah, I think I might play that even if I didn't have a dwarf. All right. Next up, what are we on to? Ooh, we've got Thunderstone Ore. So Thunderstone Ore has got a three value, which is nice. Cost five, and then you're, you have three. There's always tons of stuff you can buy if you get a bunch of threes in your hand. Um, let's see here. Village or Dungeon. You may give a hero plus one level. You may buy... Oh, so you can do an additional buy of a token while you're in the village. I like that. That's kind of nice. Um, it's... There's a lot of times where I want to buy something cheap that will give me more money to buy stuff from the village later, and that fulfills that. It's not worth a whole lot of victory points, but this is a good, hey, help me buy the more expensive things. I like those kinds of cards. So I appreciate when those are out there in the village. All right, so then we have a Crystal Light, not the drink mix. So we have a uh, plus one. Light, if you have a card with Thunderstone in its title, so it looks like it gives one, and then you can give another plus one, so you probably amplify it with a Thunderstone, and then you're going to give a hero a level. So there's a lot of things that mess with hero levels in here. I wonder when we get into spells if we're going to see things that really groove off of hero levels. All right. Um, and I guess the things that we're looking at, things that have the, these two have the Thunderstone keyword in them, right? Thunderstone Elixir and Thunderstone Ore. All right, so what's... The, ooh, this looks crazy. That looks like a, a bad trip spell. So we've got the Thunderstone Ritual. Arcane, Chaos, Divine, Elemental. So we got... It's like it's covering them all. So let's see. Magic equal to the total level of your clerics and wizards and plus one if you have a Euroqueen. Yeah, so there we go. There's where all that bonus level stuff comes into play at. Uh, village... Draw one card or gain one hit point. So it's got usefulness inside the village, even though it doesn't have a gold value, and it costs nine. All right, so that's pretty expensive. I started thinking about old fireball. Um, if you're going strictly cleric and wizard, this could be a fairly powerful card. I'm, I'm liking it for that. I do like the, the versatility, because if you go village, then uh, you're going to get, well, you Essentially, you can get another card to help drive your, your money that you got in the village up. So I do like that card. It seems a little bit expensive. And again, this is going to be another one where it really probably needs to be played in this set. I don't know how much value it's going to have outside of this set. All right. And it also has the Thunderstone keyword, right? Okay, next one up. Construct Protector. So we've got a Chaos spell. Um, plus gold equal to the level of one of your dwarves, gnomes, or your queens. Okay, so it's going to be interesting. So it's a money-making card. So it's a spell that's going to give you money. And then villager spoils gain one thunderstone protector from the box and draw it. So there's another way to get thunderstone protectors. All right, it gives you a light. All right. I'm trying to think there. So the value could be really nice, and in combination with the hero that creates those are, what is that, Tika over there? The Tika or Tilka? Tilka, the sculptor. So her in combination with the construct protector looks like it could be pretty powerful. Still need to see what those uh protect the thunderstone protectors look like where's those cards at we're getting there i guess uh transmutation so does one attack it's worth two gold it's gonna cost three so it's really cheap so destroy a hero item spell or weapon gain one card of the same type from the village all right so that's where i i can trade in my cheap spell for that 
that nice elemental spell there or you can level up so i can see with the weapons there's some leveling up the weapons as you go later so that's an interesting card what else do we have here we have animate dead a lot of seems like there's a lot of spells in this set all right uh what's animate dead give us animate dead says arcane divine chaos spell from a destroyed pile draw one hero whose skill is, or level is lower than one of your clerics or wizards level return the hero before the turn ends oh so this is a hey i can level my folks up and then um bring back the one that i used to level up for a fight okay I'm digging it. So the, I guess the downside to that is you're going to have to have a cleric or wizard. And there seems like a lot of this stuff is going pretty heavy on the cleric and wizard side of things. So might not be a huge drawback in order to have that. And it's got a gold value too. And then what's it's, uh, there is no victory point value for it. Okay. All right. And then, oop, I need to open another pack of cards. So we're, we're through, we're up to three. And we're still in our spells at this point. So we're opening up three here. Let's see. All right, so what are big wins that I'm seeing so far? So I think Dree's out on Tilka. She might be kind of cool. I'm liking the avian. I think that's, I like the avian and I like this dwarf so far. Um, as far as items, I do like the animate dead. Still wondering about the Construct Protector. Transmutation, I think, fits my play style. There's things I like to do that, that work well with that. So um, still want to know about the, the Constructs. We'll have to see what Thunderstone Protectors look like. All right. Mend. So what do we have here? We've got Chaos Divine Spell, Magic Equal to Your Highest Cleric or Wizard, Village or dungeon. Discard one card. You may heal one wound. If you discarded a Euro Queen or a card with Thunderstone in its title, gain a shard. Okay. Um, that could be really nice. And I, I look, the second part of that seems a little bit goofy on the dungeon side of stuff. I, there's probably a few instances where it would help, but it would be really nice on the village side, right? So if you've got a couple of heroes that you're not using this round, you can go ahead and get some shards for them or a shard for them. So that's, that's kind of nice. I like that. Um, it's not too expensive, not giving you any victory points and you have to have a cleric or wizard. So you could, I think in this, you could possibly get them up to level three or level four. There's some stuff that gives you a plus one. So if you're playing with the level four heroes, you might be able to get up to level five. So eh, it's going to be highly dependent. Oh, not overly thrilled with that one. Not horrible, but still fairly situational. All right, so what do we have here? We have a Keltarian bow, so five, but it says minus two for elves, humans, and Euroquains. So plus two attack. Um, if the monster has armor, ignore two of the reduction. Oh, so it kind of punches through the armor. Cool. I like it. Uh, and there are certain things that synergize with the bow, and we saw other things from other sets that do nice things with the bow. So um, as far as a weapon goes, five cost. It's not horrible expensive, and it's doing two damage. That's a decent bow. Decent weapon. All right. Then we have, ooh, that looks like a big bad boy. The Thunderstone Hammer. It's going to take five to wield that one. Um, plus... Attack equal to the hero's level, plus another one if if it's a dwarf or your queen. Ooh, so our, there's the thing that our little blunt wielding dwarf wants, right? So a level three. He's going to be getting plus four with that, and it's going to give a light, and it's worth one. Yeah, I like that. Uh, it's it's got to be in the hand of that dwarf though. But that's that's a nice little hammer there. It's not super expensive. Six is not horrible. It's a little bit up there on cost, but not bad. All right, and then we have, what the heck is this crazy thing? 
So it's a Thunderstone Rod. So it's a blunt weapon. It looks like you hit somebody with it and it would fall apart. <laughs> kind of crazy looking. So what do we got there? Um, plus one magic attack. It's going to take three to wield it. It's worth two gold. So that's nice. It only costs four. So it's pretty cheap. So dungeon. We have discard cards from your deck equal to one of your wizards level plus one or equal to the number of guardian keys and then draw one spell discarded. Interesting. So this isn't a weapon for an attacky deck. This is a weapon for a um, spell deck. So if you mix that in there with the Thunderstone Rituals, so if you have some of these Thunderstone Rods and some of those Thunderstone Rituals in there, you could get a really nice mix going because uh, I'm trying to think of the other ones that are out there. But none of the other spells are really going to help that a whole lot. That's probably the right combo. Oops, sorry. This combo right here. That could be pretty nice. I can see where that could be pretty powerful. All right, so I think we've exhausted the village cards, which is interesting in that. Let's see here. I'm going to push these up here. So there's all of our uh, bad guys. And here's all of our village. Um, we've got three weapons. Okay, what is that? That's five spells and four items. Yeah, five spells. That's pretty high on the spell count. You don't usually see that many spells. So used to seeing more on the, the weapon side of stuff. So this one's definitely pushing. And I guess you can see that in the characters too with the Thunderstone and the Wizard. There's a lot more emphasis on magic and constructive powers in this set. So interesting. All right, so now we get to look at some of the treasure cards. So we've got a Thunderstone Jar, uh, which is a heal one wound. It's not a hugely awesome treasure, but it's a decent treasure. Be okay with getting that. And then we have some treasure caches, and we have are they all the same? Sorry, I'm looking at them real quick before I put them out there. Yeah, I think they're all the same. There are five treasure caches in there. And when you gain this card, destroy it to either destroy one of your cards or gain two shards. All right. So that's kind of a man. I don't know if I got that treasure, I'd be very happy. It is kind of, I do like the, the deck thinning aspect of stuff. All right. Ooh, I think we're getting into some of the cooler Thunderstone stuff. So here we have a Thunderstone Power Armor. So if wielded, take zero wounds from monsters. Uh, if you have another card with Thunderstone in its title, gain one. All right. So this uh, can only be earned through some of the special abilities, but that's a pretty nice set of armor there. All right, what else do we have? We have the the Thunderstone Annihilator. That sounds friendly. Um, plus one for each of your other cards with Thunderstone in their title. So it's going to be plus three. And then depending upon, you do a Thunderstone Rod and pull some Thunderstone Rituals. And you're, you're tossing out a lot of Thunderstone damage potentially. So even just... Three normally isn't all that bad, but I think in this set, it's going to be really good. Plus, it's uh, three victory points, so that's pretty decent, too. All right, and what's this big old thing? The Thunderstone Carriage, which is a plus four skill. It's worth two. We got some special for the attack there. So give hero plus attack equal to their skill level. All right, villager dungeon. Discard one card with Thunderstone in its title to give this card this static keyword. All right, so you can make it stick around for the next round and it gives one light. So uh, again, I don't see that one as uber powerful, but um, well, let's see. If you give, give a hero plus one attack equal to their level, so if we were to have, let's say, where's he at? If we were to have this guy out here, we have the Oakenborn Dwarf out there, right? And he's combined those two. Uh, let's see here. So he would be at five. So if he's fighting a golem, then he's at five, seven, plus his level is 10. Then give him a blunt weapon. Okay, so that could be nice. And he'd be at 8 plus 4. Okay, yeah. 
there are certain combos where that would work out pretty well. All right. Now, we kept seeing references to them, and there's just this whole stack of them right here. So these are Thunderstone protectors. It looks like, as I browse through them real quickly, I think they're all the same. So let's just look at the top one here. So we've got Thunderstone Protector, Golem Magic Ally Static Legendary. So he's only got one attack. If you have three or more Thunderstone Protectors, discard or destroy three. Discard or destroy, you choose three when you take a wound to take one fewer wounds. Oh, they're static. Ah, they have the static keyword, so they're going to sit out there. Oh, okay. So I was looking at them like, oh, they've only got one attack. These are really lame. But uh, they're static, so they're going to pile up. Oh, and they're one each. Okay, so that's going to be a you build over time. You build this massive front that just sits out there. Okay, I like them. Um, that's, you're in it for the long game, I think, when you're doing that. Oh, my God. So you take those Thunderstone Protectors and you you combine them with something like your, uh, not the Thunderstone Ritual. Um, where's the other one at? There's one that gets a bonus. Oh, there we go. So combine that with the Thunderstone. That's what I was thinking of. So you got a stack of these guys out there. You combine them with your Thunderstone Annihilator, plus one for each other card with Thunderstone in their title. Um, that could be a fairly disgusting round. So you need that combo, but uh, that's a devastating potential combo. All right, so I guess that goes back to do I like the Construct Protector spell, and um, Til Tilka. Tilka, yep, Tilka the Sculptor at that point. So let's see here, what can she do? She can Construct one per turn, gain a Thunderstone Protector from the box and draw it. So every time she'd get played, she'd get one, plus you could be constructing them. Yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, I would have to play that to see what I think. Um, it's got potential. It is definitely, I don't know that I'd want to play without one or the other. I think I would want to have both of those. So that's like if you were playing this set and you had her, plus you had the card to make them, because you really need to ramp them up, I think. I, I think. I don't think that's a thing you could just kind of half do lightly. You would need a lot of them, and you would really need to put into generating them. So... It's got potential, but you got to go after it. All right. So one of the things is, if you look at this, there are a whole lot of starter daggers in here. And that's because the Guardian does a bunch of stuff that gives you starter daggers. So he's a fill your deck with annoying stuff. So there's a whole new stack of starter daggers. So um, if you feel like you were low, you now have plenty. All right, we got a lot of starter daggers, and then we go through. Um, these are our randomizers, so let's just go through real fast. Ooh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna say, hey, there's rats, but I forgot that's the backside of the uh, Thunderstone Guardian guy. Okay, um, let's go through our heroes real fast. So we've got because these are our randomizers, right? Barquel, Shinaris. Hamrudir, Oakenborn, I'm going to butcher so many names here. Tilka, the Sculptor, Kastlech. Uh It's a he. See, it says he unlocked magical potential. All right, so I don't have to worry about which one it is now. That's a he. Uh, we've got Liss, which Liss is a she, I'm pretty sure there. Um, we've got Thunderstone Elixir. We've got some Plate Armor. We've got a Thunderstone Ore. A crystal Light, Thunderstone Ritual, Construct Protector, Transmutation. I do like that spell. Uh, Animate Dead, and I kind of like that one too. Mend, the Keltarian Bow, the Thunderstone Hammer, which just looks cool. The Thunderstone Rod, which looks like, what the hell is that? And then, oh, then we get into some side quests here. All right, so let's get these out of the way. 
All right, so there's a review of what we've got out in the middle, and do I have space? And we'll just put that right there. Let's look at our side quest. We've got a trial by fire. After you defeat a two or higher monster with two or fewer heroes, reveal the side quest. Uh, spoils ability, and when the game ends, collect its stuff. So level up a hero. So it's going to make your heroes cheaper as a spoils. You can level up a hero, and it's going to be a little bit cheaper. So that's nice. I like that. All right. Side quest number two, Lux Stone. So this is if you get a treasure cache. Side quest is revealed. Gain it. So you're going to start to get its victory points. And then when you gain a treasure during the game, look at the top two cards of the treasure deck, destroying one. Interesting. Okay. So it looks like you're going to get to pick which one you get there. Uh, build the carriage. You're going to pay five, discard a... Item with Thunderstone in its title, a level two hero in a gear token. So, and then you get the Thunderstone carriage. So that's how you get this big beastly monster thing here is you build the carriage. Like it, okay. Oh, and surprise, surprise, there's a build the power armor. So that's gonna take, again, it's five. Uh, you need something that heals wounds and one of each gear token, and then you get the power armor. So the next one's gotta be that big gun. I'm interested to see what it takes to get the gun. Build the Annihilator. That's just, that would be an awesome side quest just to have just a name. I am building the Annihilator. All right, so it's going to cost five, one item with Thunderstone in its title, a hero with four plus skill, and one of each gear token. That's not too tough to build. Oh, I want that side quest. All right. Hey, this is my side quest. What plan? All right, after you defeat a monster with a three plus hero destroy one of your cards at random to reveal the side quest and then before battle if the side quest is revealed and you are battling a one plus monster you may roll 2d6 add the lowest roll to the monsters uh, hit points and the highest roll to the monsters uh, shard value cool I like that one um, Wow, that could be a, that's another mixed bag one. You never know what you're going to come up with. I, I do like that, though. I, I like that side quest. That's a pretty cool one. All right, so we've got some guild cards. And what do we have here? We've got the minimalist guilds. So the last guilds let you um, level up your characters of a certain class as a spoils ability. So let's see. These have, if you have a cleric and a different wizard and a monster that was at least one, either destroy one of your cards or gain two. So that's gonna looks like you can thin your deck or get some extra experience. And that is the Minimalist Guild. And I'm all about deck thinning, so I kinda like that card. We've got the Commandos Guild. So if you get a fighter and a rogue and you defeat a monster, you're gonna get three extra. That's nice. Paladin's Guild, if you have a cleric and a fighter and a monster with at least one, gain two and a gear token, and you can immediately use the gear token. Okay. And then Tomb Raiders, if you have a rogue and a wizard, you can destroy a bread to gain a treasure. Oh, that's a nice one. I like that one. Wow. Okay. All right, I think that synergizes with a lot of the stuff that's in here because uh, there's they want the rogue keyword. There's a lot of wizardy stuff in here that might actually be kind of nice outside this set as a set of cards to play with. All right, so the last thing we've got is our guardian, right? So we've got uh, Favro Anvilbane. So he's got nine with three protection on there. Um, and we've got a... For battle, discard your starter cards. That's not too rough, but of course, that's the first one that's out there. And we've got our level five guardian, which is a, this, for each starter card you have, discard a random card. I hate discarding random cards, but ideally you've got no starter cards going up against him. So hopefully you've cleaned everything out. Well, unless he's giving you daggers, right? Uh, then we have for each starter card and each level one hero you have, discard a random card. Ooh, okay, so that one's a little bit rougher. Luckily, he's not destroying cards, but he's making you discard them. All right, so there you have it. That is Thunderstone Quest, Clockwork Destiny, tons of cards. 
Um, my impression of this set is there's lots of neat synergies within this set. I don't know how well a lot of these things would combine with stuff outside of the set. There's a couple of cards here and there that would be nice outside of this set, but a lot of it relies on Thunderstone stuff being in there and synergizing off of Thunderstone. So if you were to have one of these cards in another set where you don't have a bunch of Thunderstone stuff, it might be a bit tough to play. So I do like this set. I think I would mainly play this set in itself. Um, I'm not sure how well it's going to work when mixed in uh, with, with playing like Epic Thunderstone. If I just draw one of those characters, how well they'll work out. So I don't know. I'll have to give it a try though. So that's it for now. This is a red reveals of Thunderstone Quest Clockwork Destiny. This is the ninth expansion, I believe. Yep, Quest Expansion number nine, it says. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what cards are coming in the set for you. And have fun playing some Thunderstone Quest. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.